Hi there VC, Steve Whitty here um, with another video. Um, this video is going to be a recent find video for December. It's going to be spread over to uh, parts. Um, so I did pick up quite a fair bit. It says a man here who was going to be culling a lot of his record, culling some of his records. Um, however, before I continue, I'd like to say a big thank you for the response I've had to my tag, vinyl tag video. Um, I've had a, an increased number of subscribers. Um, I'm really pleased with that. I mean, I don't really go out seeking subscribers, but um, I do appreciate those that you've took time out to watch and liked what um, I've shown you. So long may it continue. Um, before, so without much further ado, let's crack on with this video. Um, as I said, a December final find, I brought a fair bit. It's going to spread over two videos. Um, First few uh, albums I'm going to show you come from the bargain bins, um, which um, always comes up trumps for me. First one, and this I could have shown in the record that nobody else ha has a question to Rob, uh, to the Rob Walker's vinyl tag. And this is an out, out compilation called Snake Bite City. It's a, Bur it's a Birmingham compilation. Um, came out in 1992. It's basically a 14 track lp for a price of seven inch single and it came on out on blue fire records and promotion and it's basically an album that's promoting local act birmingham acts so you've got on the cover phobia pretty green big boy tomato pomeroy trouser shop bc backlash peach razor and i would say it's very the sound of the bands very much of that period either trying to be grunge shoegaze like the wonder stuff it's not a bad album. Um, it's worth keeping as a bit of a keepsake for that period. Next up, I've got a copy of the Vertigo Annual 1970. Um, two, uh, this was in the two band bins. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's a du double swell. Um, it's, it's, it's say the cover's not in great nick. Nickels play great. So on here you've got Coliseum, Rod Stewart, Jimmy Campbell, May Blitz, Juicy Lucy, Fairfield, Parlour, Magna Carta, Affinity, Black Sabbath, Gracia, Cressida, um, Nucleus, Manfred Mann's Chapter 3, Bob Downs, Doctor Strangely Strange, and Uriah Heap. Um, four staples of the Vertigo label at that time. I suspect whose albums if I were to have vertical swirls, would cost me a small fortune. And Miriam McKeever, Pata Pata, the hit sound of Miriam McKeever. Um, Marsha P showed a Miriam McKeever album in her vinyl tag. Um, Pata Pata is probably her well, most well known song, big hit in America, I believe. Um, she moved to America. Um, I saw a documentary about her a few years ago on the BBC. Um, amazing woman. Um, um, went through a lot, you know, had sort of like lost her career in America through, through her marriage. Um, she lost a daughter, daughter, one of her daughters passed away. Um, but she came through in the end and she, she sang with Paul Simon on the Graceland tour when he played Zimbabwe. So there. Couple of albums by this band in ten years after. What? And a space in time. Um that's it in the two pound bins. Covers are a bit knackered. What plays okay. Space in time plays great. Um so two albums, you know, original pressings. Um well pleased to have those. Um more in the two pound bin. This is Vinegar Joe, um, the debut album. Vinegar Joe, uh, famous for having Elkie Brooks, she was known as Elk at that time, and Robert Palmer. Um, cover's a bit knackered, that's why it was in the two pound bins, and also it looks like somebody's been doing their homework on the album as well. Um, the album itself is, you can go like that, on the Island label. Um, that's how bad the cover is. It's one of those albums actually isn't on the streaming site. The other, I think the other Vinegar Joe albums are, but that one isn't. 
something weirdly wonderful I found third ear band this is their debut album on harvest it's prog folk um very yeary sound um to it very different to anything i'd i'd heard like it um but you know it's one one of those they did have a couple more albums out and they did provide the soundtrack to um roman polanski's version of macbeth This one I was pleased to find in the £2 bins. This is um, Brian Auger and Judy Driscoll, and it's the album Open. So as you may guess, you've got one side of Brian Auger, one side of Judy Driscoll. Um, this came, this is on the Marmalade label. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, Really good, really good. I've seen, seen co copies of this guy for about 20, 30 quid. Um, it's a really good album. I uh, sort, 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 sort after. Final album of the two pan bins is, is Grand Funk. And it's, I'm trying to think which is the album in 3D. Unfortunately, somebody's ripped the actual shining on, that's it. I don't know if you can read the title. You can see it's all in 3D. The glasses aren't here. Um, it's typical American rock of, of that time. Um, Grand Funk were very popular in the early 70s. Um, I've got about three or four of that album. I've got the live album, which if you're going to have a Grand Funk album, that I would recommend the live album. But this is all right. Moving on. This is... But this is Spira Gyra, Old Boot Wine. Um, this came out in 1972. This is a 1986 reissue on the Timeless label. So again, sort of like sort of like folk, prog. Um, features on vocals, Barbara Gaskin. Um, she would go on... Um, to work with Dave Stewart and they had a number one hit single in 1981 with their version of It's My Party. Um, totally different from the original, but it's re re really good. Um, I think the band itself um, uh, lasted a, f a few years, a, 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 a couple more albums, but uh, then I think Barbara Gaskin, when they split up, Barbara Gaskin went travelling around Asia and worked as a teacher just to get before she returned back to UK into music. Might as you see me flash this. This is Stone the Crows. This is one of these Polydor specials, um, which they did a lot. I've got one of Medicine Head. I've got one of Tony Williams Lifeline. I've got a Focus one as well. Um, so they're like, a, as I say, sort of greatest hits or best of. Um, Stone the Crows, very popular in the early 70s got maggie bell got um, alex harvey's brother les on guitar unfortunately fate dealt a cruel blow when les harvey was electrocuted um when he played a gig in swansea and the band carried on with jimmy mcculloch but never the same um uh, harvey and bell were in a relationship so i think that sort of affected Affected, but uh, it's some really good music and there's some good clips of them on Whistle Test and Beat Club as well if you want to see them out. This is Band Straight Stage Fright. This is an album I've been sort of searching for for a while and I could never see it. Um, great album, um, great album. Um, got Strawberry Wine, Sleeping, Time to Kill, Just Another Whistle Stop. Or LA Glory, The Shape I'm In, probably best known track on the album, The WS Walcott Medicine Show, Daniel and the Sacred Heart, Stage Fright, The Rumour, um, engineered by Todd Rungram, um, recorded at Woodstock. Um, and obviously, I mentioned in the vinyl tag video about Robbie Robertson as well, so really pleased to have that. Band whose second album I just picked up just before Christmas. This is Simand. Simande, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, this is their album 
second time round, came out in, originally in 1970, 1973, sorry. Um, a bit of funk, sort of reggae, a bit re reggae, a bit of world music influence. These were descendants of first generation Windrush um, immigrants that came to the UK. Um, this is wonderful. I do like this band a lot. It, as I say, it's a 2023 reissue. A nice green um, vinyl. If you see this, these these band, um, it's well worth checking out. They really are good. Hopefully, I think there's a couple more albums. Um, hopefully, they'll get reissued as well. Um, moving on very quickly. A couple of albums from the Groundhogs. Now, these old Beat Goes On reissues. The debut album, it was scratching the surface. I think this is the 1990 reissue. This is when um, Steve Wright was harmonica and vocals in the band. Um, you can see from the um, from the cover that uh, I think one member didn't think it was a good idea to be standing waist deep in cold water. You can see from the back, uh, walking around <laughs> without the trousers on, <laughs> looking for somewhere to um, dry off. This is probably the nearest they came to a normal proper blues album being the debut obviously we, again T.S. McPhee was the person we lost album produced by Mike Bat there you go um, as I say I've got, I picked up that and then the following week blues obituary came in featuring the reverend T.S. McPhee they, they then come down to a three piece you know, the classic three piece of T.S. McPhee Preet Cookshank on bass and Ken Pastelink on drums, produced by uh, Tony McPhee. Um, this is now the band starting to uh, experiment or, or my TS, uh, Tony McPhee was starting to experiment more. Great album, really great album. I'm so, I'm so glad I've managed to find copies of these because originals are dead, dead expensive and very difficult to find. I've got somewhere, um, Tony McPhee's biography, um, or it's sort of like a history of the Groundhogs. I've got to finish reading, so excellent. And the final record on this section, this probably makes me more pleased than anything to have found this. Uh, Looking On by The Move. It was the last Move album when I had, hadn't got. This is a US I I issue on Capitol. There you go. Um, this is their heavy album. Jeff Lynne had, had joined the band at this time. They were a four-piece. Rick Price was still on bass. Um, so looking on, Turkish Tram, Conductor Blues, What? When Alice Comes Back to the Farm, Open Up and Set the World at the Door, Brontosaurus, which I think was a hit single for him, Feel Too Good. Um, this is excellent. Um, so pleased to have this. You know, if you've watched... The video I did a couple of years ago with um, James Griffiths, you'll know how much I liked like the move. And Roy Wood, I think he's one of the great uh, geniuses of British music. So I think I've cool, kept it down to 15 minutes. That's good. Well, under 15 minutes. Um, so there, VC, that's part one. I will get around to doing part two, probably either do it you know, towards the end of the week or beginning of next week. Um, but again, thank you for my new, new subscribers. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Love the interaction. Um, so there. So whatever you get up to, VC, keep spinning. More importantly, keep on smiling.